Okay, let's get started. Um, welcome to the Murray City Planning Commission meeting. It is November 16th, 2023, at 6.33 p.m. I'm just going to introduce everybody up here. Um, to my left, we have Commissioners Travis Nay, Ned Hacker, Vice Chair Lisa Mulkevich. I'm Jake Pearson. Um, to my right, we have Commissioners Marin Patterson and Michael Henry. And then from staff, we have Zachary Smallwood, who's standing up, and Mustafa Aljanabi. I'd like to remind everybody to silence their cell phones. Um, this meeting is being recorded and live streamed online at murraycitylive.com and facebook.com slash murraycityutah. There's going to be a public comment section during the meeting. During this time, the public is welcome to come up to the podium and make a comment. When you do come up, we will ask that you state your name and address and limit your comments to three minutes. And we ask that you speak into the microphone so not only we can hear you, but so the people at home watching could also hear you. Um, those watching remotely, if you would like to submit a comment, you can do that. But the only way you can do that is emailing planningcommission at murray.utah.gov. If you make a comment on a video on Facebook or otherwise, we will not be able to see that. So please, if you want to make a comment remotely, that is the only way to do it. Okay, unless, I, unless anybody has anything else, we'll get started on the agenda. Um, our first item is approval of minutes from our, our October 5th, 2023 meeting. We did discuss this in our pre-meeting and we did make a few small recommendations and changes. But other than that, unless we need to have a discussion, we can have a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve the October 5th, 2023 minutes as submitted. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Nay. Do we have a second? I second the motion. We have a second from Vice Chair Mulkevich. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Perfect. Okay, our agenda item number two is conflict of interest. Does anybody here have a conflict of interest for the agenda items tonight? No. 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 And neither do I. We have no findings of facts, so we're going to move right on to number four, Cottonwood Security. And this is going to pre be presented by Mustafa Aljanabi. Mustafa. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, let's start with this. So this is a conditional use permit for a uh, light-duty metal fabrication and construction contractor. This is the location of it. Uh, as you can see, the site is actually highlighted in the light blue and the actual office slash shop is located in the dark blue side. Uh, let's see, the location is in the MG zone as highlighted over there. And for that, it is a general manufacturing. So this is a picture of where the shop would be slash office. Uh, this will be the entrance of it. It will be, the entrance would be on the 4500 South and it would be through a private uh, entrance uh, through a couple of parking lots. This is another picture of the property. And over here we have the office and the shop. So the shop would be on the yellow area and the orange would be the office as shown. So based on this and based on what presented, this is what's presented by the applicant. There is around 12 uh, spaces for parking uh, with an overflow parking space, what is required by the code, according to my calculations, would be a total of 17 parking spaces. Six parking spaces would be for the uh, office, and then 11 parking spaces would be for the workshop. The shop is made, as, as I said, for fabrication, so it'll be steel, iron, and so on. As stated by the applicant, there'll be nine people total working. There'll be one available uh, truck for transportation, of goods and people. Uh, and I would, Zach wanted me to mention that it's a uh, garbage, uh, enclosed garbage disposal. So that's a very good area, which is, and if I could, yeah, which is right over here. Uh, let's see. Uh, based on that, based on the findings, uh, the proposed uh, purpose for the metal a fabrication co uh, contractor should be uh, allowed according to land use code of three, uh, 3494 and 6600. 
uh, in the MG zone uh, based on the approvals and based on that, based on the three findings over here, the staff would recommend the approval for this uh, conditional use permit based on those four uh, conditions. Any questions, comments, concerns? No questions? Okay, thank you, Mustafa, appreciate it. Um, is the applicant present? Could you please come up to the podium, state your name and address for us? My personal address for the shop. Either one. Uh, Zach French, the shop address there is 79 West, 4500 South, unit number 24. Okay, thank you. Um, have you had a chance to review these four conditions? Yes. Perfect, and we, will you be able to comply with those? Yes. Okay. Is there any additional information you'd like to share with the commission? I don't think so. Okay. Do any commissioners have any questions for the applicant? No questions? Thank you. You can have a seat. Appreciate it. Um, we're now going to open up the public comment period. So if you'd like to make a public comment, please come up to the podium, state your name and address, and please keep your comment to three minutes. And if you're watching remotely, the only way you can make a comment is by emailing planningcommission at murray.utah.gov. Hi, my name's Tristan Hughes. I live at 4706 South Hill House Cove. Uh, so that is the residence that is right behind where that suggestion stop is to be. Um, the reason for my comments is because currently right now there's a few shops that are on each side of that building or each side of that uh, place. And right now there's not too big of a concern because occasionally those shops do operate at late hours or very early hours that have been either waking up extremely early because of noise or have been very much later into 9 p.m. hours at night. Once again, not a huge concern because it's one-off occasions. However, my concern would be if we're having metal work done in those earlier hours or later hours again, or because those townhomes there are all rooftop townhomes means that people spend their summers on the roof deck. If there's any debris that is coming out from the shop that is downwind of us. That's all I like to say. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other public comments for people present? Zach, we got any emails? Okay, thank you. Um, seeing no other comments, we will close the public comment period. And we could probably talk about the noise and hours. Those, those um, are the topics I'd like to talk about. Zach, can you talk about noise ordinances for us briefly? I'm putting you on the spot. Sorry. No, you're good. Um, sorry, I was explaining to Mustafa how to address these questions, and then you <laughs> asked me to do it, so I'm just going to do it. Um, I'll do it. It's okay. Um, so there are quiet hours in the city, so anything, um, I believe, from 10 p.m. to 6 or 7 a.m. Um, are quiet hours. Uh, so if you are experiencing anything between those hours, always you, you feel free to give us a call. I know that's 6 a.m. is pretty early, um, uh, but those are uh, not state, but county regulated hours. Um, but we are cognizant of that. Um, and we can have the applicant address what hours of operation he plans on having, if you'd like to do that. Um, as far as um, debris and things like that, uh, those will be addressed by, the, so um, all the departments in the city review these applications before they come to the Planning Commission. Uh, and so for example, the Power and Fire Department have already looked at these plans, they're already aware of them. Um, and so when they apply for a business license, they'll go out and inspect and make sure that they're meeting all the fire department requirements um, so that you don't have shards of metal flying anywhere because um, that that could and and uh, Cottonwood security has worked in Murray previously um, at a different location um, and is moving back to Murray um, we've had a pretty good relationship with them before um, but yeah it's definitely something that we'll pay attention to as well thank you 
Um, I would like to have the applicant come back up, but before I do that, does anybody else have anything we want to discuss before that? I, I brought up in pre-meeting the discussions about noise and hours of operation, so I think they're being addressed. Okay, thank you. Could we have you come back up? Please state your name and address once more. Uh, Zach French, 79 West, 20, 79 West, 4500 South. Thank you. Before. Could you just maybe briefly explain um, what you're going to do and maybe relate that to if there's any going to be any noise and your, what hours you think you're going to be operating? Sure. So we do, our primary thing is, is railing, so cutting and welding metal. Um, our hours are pretty consistent, 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. Okay. Any <clears throat> questions for the applicant? None? Thank you. You can have a seat again. Thanks. Okay. Um, we can have more discussion or we can entertain a motion. Can I just ask a quick question? Please. Just, so, Zach, I'm... I, my knowledge in cutting and welding is minimal, so I'm assuming any thing, any concerns around sparks or electrical needs or heating or venting or fire, all that is taken care of in the licensure process through the multiple departments involved, right? Yes, that's 100% correct. Because okay. yeah, we none of us up here are experts in in welding and. Yeah, fire and all that fun stuff. What? You don't know what I do. On hey, the you do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do know what you do. Okay, um, no, it's okay. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it's uh, that will be uh, thoroughly reviewed by the fire department and and all the other departments as well. Um, business licensing does a really good job at farming these out to the appropriate departments. And then any or, uh, noise ordinances that are established by the county will be imposed here. Yeah, right? so precisely. So cutting metal causes noise. Mm. It needs to be within the county regulations. Exactly. Right. Okay. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the conditional use permit to allow the operation of metal fabrication and contract construction services business at the property address 79 West, 4500 South, number 24, subject to the four condition. Thank you. We have a motion from Commissioner Patterson. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second from Commissioner Nay. Um, somebody, <laughs> will you do a roll call vote? <laughs> Commissioner Patterson. Yes. Commissioner Nay. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Henry. Yes. I almost called you Richards. I apologize. Yes. Um, yes. You're still in my thing. Uh, Commissioner Hacker. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Mokavich? Yes. And Chair Pearson? Yes. Okay, that passes. Congratulations. Uh, we look forward to seeing your business in Murray. Okay, let's move on to agenda item number five, Skin Care, Inc. And this is going to be presented by Mustaf al Janabi as well. Hey, it's me again. Uh, so with this, it's very... Fairly simple and very quick, to be honest. Uh, the application is for a massage therapist to new uh, massage therapist in already existing business. This would be the location of it. Uh, the highlighted light blue is the uh, actual location of the entire office, and the bl dark blue is where the new massage therapist plus where Skin uh, Skincare Inc. is located. It is located in the R&B zone, which is a multi-use uh, commercial uh, slash residential. But for this one, it's a multi-use commercial. Uh, as stated, it is on 900 East. So this road would be accessed from 900 East. Uh, this would be the location uh, of the new office. And the little uh, circled office is where it's going to be. Uh, the applicant has two rooms and it is it will be within those two. It is a utilized space of 110 square foot. This would be the entrance of it. This is where the office is located from pictures. This would be the parking space around. Uh, the total parking space for this location is 54 in total. While for the based on the calculations that I did, it only requires one parking space for the new office of 110 square foot. This is the extra uh, space that are that is across from the office located. Let's see. This is a aerial view of it. And uh, truck to more notes. There's nothing else that I would see. So uh, for the findings, the property uh, and 
the business proposed for the massage therapy it is under land use code of 6296 which would be allowed in the RMV zone uh, based on these findings uh, the staff would recommend the approval for the plan for the conditional use permit based on those three uh, conditions questions comments concerns go ahead um, simple question on the, when you were looking at the floor plan, you said new office, but this is an existing business, business and just an expansion of the... Correct. Excuse my... Use. Yes. Okay. It is. Excuse my language. It is a, a new... And it is a business, an already existing business, so there's no new office going to be in there. It's just... And, and the reason why they have to get this conditional use is because they all have to get their own business license. Is that correct? Correct. It would okay. be a yeah. separate business license. I just, there's, some will not be happy with my feelings. I feel obligated to say that I know the city code is being met with what this site has more parking than needed. And the city code states that they only need one additional parking. But I have to acknowledge that that's a little ridiculous because a therapist and their client, there will absolutely be two cars. I'm not concerned about this application. There's 54 parking spots, they're fine. But the parking code's a little interesting. I live right over by this area, and I'll tell you, the only time you see any cars parked on 900 East is uh, during the farmer's market oh, on Sunday morning. And outside of that, you never see anybody parked there. It's a, it's a dangerous place to get out of your automobile. Because cars are usually doing 60 miles an hour in a 40. Uh, so There is no concerns with this application. It's just the code's a little silly. Okay, any other questions for staff? Seeing none, um, is the applicant present? Can you please come up to the podium? Please state your name and address. Hi, thank you for being here. Um, I'm Cheryl Edvilson, and my address, address I'll use of the business 6268 South 900 East, Suite 200. Perfect. Thank you for being here. Um, have you read, can you put those conditions back up real quick? Have you read these three conditions? That yes, I have. To show on the board? Okay, yeah. perfect. And will you be able to comply with those? Absolutely. Perfect. Um, the second have... one's already taken care of. The fire chief came in the other day. It's Great. all ready to go. Awesome. Um, is there any other additional information you'd like to share with the commission? No, they just have it. I was like, a, I wanted to know they have two rooms, but we have that circled one room. The two are shot, they work different hours. The two massage therapists work two, they work separate hours, and there's one room that has two rooms in the. I just wanted to point that out. That's so when I was reading through this, I saw it. So are you saying that they're going to be occupying that just one room circle? Is that correct? Right, at different times. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's okay. all. Um, do any of the commissioners have a question for the applicant? Okay. So, um, you can go ahead and have a seat. Thanks for coming. Okay. Thank you. We're going to um, open up the public comment period. So if you'd like to make a public comment, please come up to the podium, state your name and address. Please keep your comments to three minutes. And if you are watching remotely, you can make a comment, but the only way you can do it is by emailing planningcommission at murray.utah.gov. Is anybody present that would like to make a comment? I don't see anybody here. We're just going to give it another 30 seconds to see if someone wants to email in. 30 seconds is a long time. I know. You I, should I, I, you're you should staring count. at you for 10 already. Mm, happy, happy <laughs> counting. <laughs> I mean, you know, I want to give them a chance. I know. I'm trying. I keep refreshing. We have none? No. Okay, we're going to go ahead and close the public comment period. Um, well, we can have a discussion or we can entertain a motion. Mr. Just, Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Hacker. Mr. Chairman, I make motion that the Planning Commission approve conditional use permit to permit a, uh, uh, to allow a massage therapist business at the property address 6268 South 900 East Suite 200, subject to the three conditions listed. Thank you. We have a motion from Commissioner Hacker. Do we have a second? I'd like the second. We have a second from Vice Chair Mulkevich. Can we have a vote? Oh, yes. Call vote. Uh, Commissioner Hacker. Yes. Commissioner Mulkevich. Yes. Commissioner Henry. Yes. 
Yes. Commissioner Nay? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Patterson? Yes. And Chair Pearson? Yes. Okay, congratulations. That is approved. Um, we're going to move on to our next agenda item. It is number six, and it is something that I don't have right in front of me. It is land use text amendment, and it's going to be presented by Zachary Smallwood. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> so I don't have very many slides for this. I pretty much have findings and a, and a motion. So I'm just going to kind of explain it. So the- I, I'm gonna interrupt, sorry. If anybody's here, don't oh, feel yeah. obligated to stay. I mean, you can stay if you'd like, but please feel free to walk out. Yeah, because <laughs> this gets real boring. This, this is, is where we boring. make the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. I keep meaning to tell you that at the beginning of the meeting that we need to add it to the script that once your app, yeah, once I, your your thing is done, I, you're free to go. I should do this. Yes, I will try to. I'll try to. And I apologize. I keep forgetting. <laughs> you. Yeah. <Yep. laughs> okay. So yeah, uh, over at least the past five years that I've been here, um, five and a half now. Crazy. Um, so. We have brought uh, a, a number of contractors. Uh, tonight was uh, an example of one. He had an, another land use code, but um, the contractor side of it. Uh, we've brought a lot of those as through as conditional use permits. And um, previous planning commissioners, current planning commissioners have asked, you know, these, these are pretty much rubber stamp pretty much there usually is not a lot that goes into these um, into contractor uses also contractors are pretty much permitted in every other zone um, including like our commercial district it is office only but they're pretty much permitted in every other zone um, I as staff we feel that um, this is a less impactful use than than some other uses that are currently permitted in the MG zone. Um, the example that uh, I wrote and for the public that may be watching because there are none here in the audience, um, <laughs> that, uh, so for example, if there was a cab cabinetry shop that had come, that wanted to come into Murray City and found a space, uh, they would be able to operate as a permitted use. Uh, they wouldn't need to come before this body. They would just be able to apply for a business license and go on their merry way. Um, however, if they wanted to install those same cabinets that they manufacture, um, then they would actually need to come before this body. Um, I, I don't, in my opinion, I don't think that is a greater impact when you're actually taking something and going off-site um, than the impact of manufacturing something um, so instead of just belaboring it and going on and on um, we find that the proposed text amendments support the goals and objective of the general plan um, by facilitating a mix of uses um, and appropriate transitions and buffers uh, the proposed text amendment is consistent with the purpose of the MG zone and um, and it's been carefully considered uh, to provide additional opportunity and a little bit more of a streamlined process for uh, people that may be moving in, businesses moving into Murray City. So with that, we are recommending that the Planning Commission forward a recommendation of approval uh, to the City Council for the proposed text amendments to Section 17.144.020 and 17.144.030 as that's the wrong one. So, <laughs> thanks, Susan. It's, it's 17.152. I was like, that, that, that number doesn't seem right. 17.152.020 and 17.152.030 um, as in your staff report. I have to be clear. It's kind it, it's of, correct I put it in on there, the heading, so it's kind of my fault. It's not, a, it's not correct on the conclusions. Yeah. Yep. So we need to just, whoever does the motion will just need to correct that. Does anybody have questions for Zach? Okay. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Just, you just help me relate that back to the conditional use permit we had earlier. 
Was that in 152 or is that a, a different section? It's in 152, yes. So <laughs> he would have had to come here before this body for the metal manufacturing, um, for the metal fabrication, sorry, not manufacturing, for the fabrication, but he would not have to have had the approval for the conditional use or for the um, contractor side where he takes those railings and goes and installs them into somebody's home. Um, so you're saying right now it, that does require a conditional use? Correct. The, con the contracting portion? Correct. Okay, so we... Okay. And a lot of times, a lot of times what happens here is uh, you'll get like general contractors, right? So these are just um, people that come in and, uh, for example, I actually hired a general contractor from Murray um, to redo my house. Um, and he actually found out halfway through he didn't have a business license. So, um, <laughs> so I do your research. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, but, but I helped him get through that. Um, and he, that, that unit actually already had a conditional use for a contractor, so you didn't have to see him, um, which would have been terribly embarrassing if I had to bring that before you and be like, yeah, I'm working with this. I have to, I have to recuse myself. I'm working with this guy. Um, so it's, uh, what he really does is just organize other contractors. He organizes the electricians, the, the um, you know, plumbers, everything like that, that honestly have businesses outside Murray. But because he is a contractor and has a contractor's license, um, that automatically flags at the business license that says check for a con conditional use. And if they don't, if that unit or whatever doesn't have one, then they have to come before us. So you. All the examples I can think of and the examples you've given seem very straightforward, but why was this originally made a conditional use? Are there contractors in which they bring their business into the site that I can't think of? Um, this code was written in probably 1982. And so here, here's how things have kind of changed. Back in the day, um, I don't know exactly when, um, it was before I really became a planner. Um, <laughs> conditional uses were a way to pretty much tell people no. Um, it was an easy way to tell people no, um, that it wasn't appropriate for no other reason than just to say it wasn't appropriate. So what about contractors did we not like in 82? That's a great question. I, I, I wasn't born. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I can't tell you. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's still, I respect that you weren't born, but I think your parents were pretty smart people. What am I missing? Did things just change in what we define as a contractor now? now? So, I mean, in, in a lot of instances, so the planning, commi planning commissions writ large had a lot more leeway in what they could say. It wasn't before like it is now where this is an administrative action. If it meets the code, you approve. They could say, oh, I don't like that you do this and this. You must do something else. I can't think of any examples. Um, but I, I can try and find you some minutes that are pretty blatant. They don't like that you have 10 feet of landscaping, even though the code says you have to have 10 feet of landscaping. I think you need to have 12 feet of landscaping. So let me, <clears throat> yeah. And it was, a, it was a way for control. Um, it, because permitted uses were just permitted. Conditional uses was a way for control. Um, so you're saying in the past most contractors were women and the men on the committee didn't like the women, so they would say no because I was a woman? Yes. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out what the... Pretty uh, much, no. Um, it, it's just yeah. that it's an, it was a different time, and, and these codes have not been updated in a very long time. And... Hold on to your seat, Lisa Milkevich, because I am coming after these codes hard next year. So, um, for a lot of different things. Well, just on the generally, what you said, you don't think there ought to be conditional uses for anything? No, not at all. There should be conditional uses for certain things, like metal fabrication, because there are those instances where we need to verify. The, the 
fire department, I mean, they still look at it. The fire department needs to look at those things. Um, but in general, yeah, there should be conditional uses in a lot of places. Um, but contractors in a manufacturing zone, no, I don't think it should be a conditional use. Contractors in, well, let's even, let's even go a step further. I will even change that or, or even state that contractors are allowed in residential zones as a, as a major home occupation that does not have to come before this body if they get signatures for people around them. Um, we've had a couple that have come before here because they can't get those signatures, but they're allowed in residential zones. And, but, and they don't have to do anything. They, they don't pay an application fee when they do the major home occupation. They just come in here, they tell you why they couldn't get signatures, and they move on about their day. Here, we, we require them to provide us a site plan, a floor plan, a narrative of what their, what their operations are like, and then we go through the public hearing process. It really delays people from starting, kind of moving their business to Murray. It's, it, it, we've been told numerous times that it's just slowed down, slowed down everything, and, and I tend to agree. There's a lot of times where I think things do need to be slowed down and need to be looked at a little bit more in depth. But in this particular case, I don't. I don't think so. So, so we can't come up um, with money in time. So we can't come up with a scenario in which a contractor would be bringing their clients into the facility. And if they did, well, if, yeah. Changing, well, I guess changing the practice on site. That's what I'm saying. Because currently, what, how we're describing contractors is what's happening on site. We don't have a problem with. It's when they go to sell their product, and so that's their product and so we shouldn't have a concern is there any other scenario what, what do you mean I I, I, I don't I, I apologize I don't understand well I, I guess you've answered my question to the extent you can I'm just looking for why there would be a concern to have a contractor on site because every scenario we've described makes perfect sense so I'm still looking for why this law was created and what concern I should be concerned and in about. all honesty it's it be, it's because control it, it was it was a control mechanism. Conditional uses have throughout time been a, can, a control um, mechanism. I have a comment and then a question. Sure. I guess my comment would be, um, if you look at these other permitted uses, um, you know, manufacturing is probably more of an impact to the surrounding area than a. a the contractor would be. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't have any issue with adding it. My question is somewhat related, but not exactly related. So when we have a conditional use come before this body, like the one previous, where it was metal fabrication, they also, I mean, they would probably qualify for multiple conditional uses, right? Because just like we just said, they would have had to apply for mm -hmm. the contractor or subcontract anyway. Yeah. So on your do, do thing, just, yeah, it, it actually lists both. It listed both land use codes, 3494 and 6600. It did on the on that. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yep. I didn't even notice that. So. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Uh, it should be on your cover page. It's okay. Keep asking. I have no other questions. Perfect. So in, in theory, you could have multiple conditional uses, and we just do it all as one mm -hmm. approval. Okay. Yeah. Cool. What What about a situation where you've got a somebody that's a construction contractor that doesn't do any of the work on site? but they may have equipment or trucks or, mm -hmm. or whatever uh, that may have some impact to the, to the site more than, they're, they're not just doing the business or the contractual work, they, but some of the, the construction. Sure. Um, so they, uh, there shouldn't, there's a different land use code for actually constructing things. I mean, that's, that, that's manufacturing, right? Well, yeah, You're, that's manufacturing. Um, and and but so. if they're doing off-site 
construction, but they still have the equipment necessary to do it. Mm -hmm. That could be anything. I mean, you could be talking about cranes and... Yes. But currently, um, for example, Wagstaff crane, I believe, is a permitted use. Um, crane storage, vehicle storage, um, is a permitted use in the MG zone. Um, equipment storage in general, tow yards, um, pretty much go down, go along Third West, north of 4500 South, and you will see the epitome of the MG zone. It's, it's crane storage units, tow yards, concrete manufacturing. And you're saying all those are just permitted uses? Those are permitted uses. So by storing, by, some, by a contractor coming in and storing some trucks and some construction equipment, I don't think that's an, that, is, that does not rise to the same impact level as somebody that would be doing, I don't know, building office machines or, yeah, constructing railroads. <laughs> I'm just looking at all, some of the things here in the, in the, yeah. Yeah, so the, the greater 66, the, the greater, so all these land use co codes are associated with a certain kind of broader category. And the 6,000s are considered quote unquote services. So these are service industries where anything in the twos and threes are your heavy industrial and manufacturing type uses. Which you'll notice in the, con in the conditional uses, we have a lot more 2000s and 3000s as opposed to, yeah. And your 5500s are retail if you're curious. Are there more questions for Zach? Okay, we can continue to have a discussion or we can entertain the motion. Mr. Chairman, uh, I recommend have, that the planning commission. Do we need public comment? Oh, we, we do. We do. We haven't done that, right? Do we? Yes, we do. Sorry. Do Let's that. do that real quick. Um, I'm going to open up the public comment period. So there is um, nobody here. So if you are watching remotely, we'll give you a little bit to email your comment to planning commission at murray.utah.gov. I was used to being on my own iPad, so I was about to swipe up and go to YouTube and see the stream and see if anybody had commented oh, on yeah. to see if anybody was watching, because that's what I do. But no comments. Okay, we're going to go ahead and close the public comment period, and now we could entertain a motion. Oh, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that uh, the Planning Commission forward a recommendation of approval of the City Council for the proposed text amendments to sections 17.152.020 and 17.152.030. Thank you. We have a motion from Commissioner Ney. Is there a second? I'll second it. We have a second from Commissioner Hacker. Let's do a roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Renee? Yes. Commissioner Hacker? Yes. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Patterson? Yes. Commissioner Malkiewicz? Yes. And Chair Pearson? Yes. Congratulations, Zach. Yay. Right. <laughs> okay, let's move on to number seven. Zach as well. Yes. So um, this one is amending a bunch of sections. Um, the geo zone, the MG zone, I believe the CD zone, and some others. Um, sorry, let me look at it. Oh, geo, yeah. Okay. I apologize, I didn't write this one. Susan actually had a really exciting planning commission planned for Draper. She is a planning commission in Draper. I don't know if you guys know that, but um, she had an exciting one she wanted to attend, so I told her I'd cover her stuff for tonight. Um, so this is repealing the land use code 1113, which is single family attached to non-residential. Um, 
this has been uh, kind of a thorn in the city side for a number of years um, because it's hard. We don't have a definition of what that really means. Um, how it's been interpreted uh, for many years is that it's kind of a caretaker residence. So if you guys remember um, older like uh, storage facilities used to have like somebody on site living, but also managed the um, managed the business as well. Um, that's how it had been traditionally interpreted. Um, and then over the course of a year or two now, um, people have, have kind of changed that and have been challenging that to mean more of just anything. Um, and, and there's no real definition on what that means. Um, we still do, we, we do have definitions for like live work, um, like in our TOD zones. Uh, that's what this kind of would get confused with is as a, like a live work residence. Um, and it's not what it was intended to be. And so we are proposing removing it um, from these commercial zones currently. Um, because yeah, it's caused a lot of headache. And that's really all I have to say on the matter. I'm happy to take questions. So this says that it would get confused with home occupation businesses. Correct. Which we know are like in residential uses. So they were like in a manufacturing zone and wanting to run a business from a place that they were living in. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's actually exactly one of the things that happened mm -hmm. is that somebody was living in one of these zones. Um, which the home occupation code says that the home occupation has to happen in a residential zone. I know I just said use code zones, and that's yeah. going to confuse the living daylights out of everyone, is even me. Um, but yeah, there are home occupations which are only allowed to happen in residential zones, and then um, but this was being construed to allow for that. So if someone has a, a random house in a MG zone mm -hmm. that they are living in, they're not allowed to do a business from it. Correct. Okay. So because, and I'll, and I'll explain that, because the single family residential use that's being used there is a non-conforming use. That means that the zone has changed mm -hmm. and the city, because that zone has changed, has anticipated that that use is and will go away at some point. It's allowed to maintain and be used as a single family residence or whatever, what have you, for any amount of time, as long as it's continually used. Um, however, once you abandon that use, which um, abandon is one year of non of not being used as a single family dwelling then it goes away that that protection goes away has to come up to current zoning um, so any non-conforming use needs to it's anticipated to go away so what about if it was written for like you said um, caretaker residence or something is that something that we don't like have storage units that have a, a residence or a caretaker anymore or, there, or we, you just don't want those? Um, if they exist currently, I don't think we have any that exist currently anymore. Uh -huh. um, they would be then, they would become non-conforming uh -huh. and still allowed to continue Okay. Um, as long as that use is not abandoned. Um, but moving forward, but you moving wouldn't forward, want a storage yeah. unit that had a Correct. caretaker. And typically that's not the business model yeah. that storage companies are, yeah. yeah. They've, yeah. they've moved to more automatic doors and paying mm -hmm. your bill online. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> that's typically what they've... And like yeah. big buildings. Right? Yeah, because big blocks. I'm really... I was nervous when I first saw this because um, it was one thing that I really liked about the NCCD, which I know maybe things are changing in the MCCD, but that that in those zones that wouldn't, this is, it doesn't apply. It doesn't apply to you these still zones. No, we still have live work units. units, yeah. This is just specifically kind of those strictly commercial zones. Mm -hmm. So the GO, 
um, CD, MG, and there's one more I just can't think of. CN. CN, yes, commercial neighborhood. So I, I, do, I have a question. Sure. So I, I'm trying to formulate my question. That's fine. <laughs> Does anybody else have questions I, I, I've, for me? Okay. I've been to cities where um, people often live in their business. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Um, and I know we have the live work, you know, whatever that's called, but the... Yeah, it's live work. The, and and, and that's, that's permitted where? Where do we have live work at? Now? We have live work in all of our mixed use codes. Okay. So, you know, TOD, yep. MCCD, MCMU, um, all those codes. And then in every single fam any sorry, any residential zone, um, so R18, R16, okay. um, RM zones, um, you are allowed to have a home-based business. Um, it, it's just that, it, it's been that confusion of, of, we don't, it's been kind of that uh, the home-based business is not really what these zones are meant for. Okay, so run down real quick. Sorry, I'm going to put you on the spot again. You're good. I'm going to go through each of these zones. Geo, mm -hmm. what would generally be in a geo zone? So those are, so the, the geo zone is general office. Sure. So it should be office uses. Right. Um, so would that be a doctor's office? Doctor's office yeah. is. Um, so if I wanted to have a doctor's office and live <laughs> behind it, I couldn't do that. Correct. Mm -hmm. MG zone. Manufacturing okay. general zone. So if I wanted to have a sewing shop in the front and live behind, I couldn't do that. Correct. Okay. And then the CN zone. Those are neighborhood commercials, so it's kind of like come and go on 9th East. Um, sorry, I couldn't help myself on that one. Um, Maverick, by the way. What? Huh? It's Maverick, by the way. Oh, yeah, now will it's Maverick. Be. It will. Yet. Have they changed the sign in? No. no. Oh, okay. I was going to say, because they haven't applied for a sign permit. <laughs> Um, so, um, but those are kind of, those are, so if I wanted to have a neighbor corner market that mm -hmm. I sold my fresh bread out of, I couldn't live behind it. Correct. Okay. And the, CD, the zone. CD zone, um, uh, CD zone, right? Is that what you just said? Yeah. So you couldn't have a, a dress shop and live behind okay. it. I'm sorry. I don't. Personally, I don't see any reason we shouldn't allow people to live behind their dress shop or mm -hmm. their bakery mm -hmm. or their their little uh, physician, you know, area. Mm -hmm. I know that's not happening in Murray. I mean, I know that's, you know, we can't point to anybody doing that, but I don't see that as a bad thing. Sure, and I completely understand that. Um, I think it's just because of where we're at right now um, and the way it's been applied. Um, it's, it's, these land use codes are very particular on how they read and how they're interpreted. And um, this is Zach's pontificating, <laughs> what, 6.0 today? Um, my goal is to eventually eliminate these land use codes um, only two cities in, in the state use this type of um, way of classifying land uses, um, and we're one. So, um, Tell us who the other one is, just so I know. Provo. Mm -hmm. Provo. Mm -hmm. huh? Interesting. But they use, they, well they use theirs a lot more broadly. Um, they use the broad numbers, which is like 6,600, because there's usually like 6,600 through 6,699. Um, and there's a whole list of every type of contractor you could possibly think of. Um, they use theirs more broadly. Um, but anyway, that gets kind of off topic. These codes are, are difficult because I, I, to a point, agree. Um, I am all about mixed use, right? Like that's literally what it is. But the, they have the way that our... our one, our home occupation business, our code reads is, causes conflict with this code. And um, it, it, it's just, it's been a real, it, it's honestly been a nightmare to try to 
keep. We've had two appeals from it. Um, and yeah. Could, could we not just, instead of redlining these, just put live work? No, because that land use code is tied to a different document. Um, could we not make a new document, call it live work 2.0, <laughs> and tie it to this? Possibly. <laughs> okay. Possibly, but we would need to... Um, we would have to change. It's outside the scope of what this application is from the city. It would be us amending the land use code. As sure. A, as a so it would just to, be. It would be more difficult. Is what you're saying? Well, not necessarily. I mean, it, it would require us to do instead of process this one as a repeal. Sure. You would. We would come in and change what the land use code one 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 three states. Oh sure. Okay. So yeah. here I can no, I can show sense. you exactly what the land use code looks like because I have it up. Because um, when I meet with people. So, That's you guys do have artwork. a copy of this somewhere buried in your houses because we give you one. I never got one. But <laughs> yes, I, I came in during COVID. Oh, that's So no one maybe. could touch me or so, come to my house or anything. <laughs> so <laughs> 1,000, the, the 1,000 codes are living areas. 1,100 are household units. So we have single family dwellings. We have single family dwelling attached. Um, here we go. Single family dwelling attached to a commercial, industrial, or other non-residential use. Dwelling unit can be under, over, in front, behind, or beside non-residential use in the structure. So here's where we have had difficulties. So actually, to go back to your question, um, let's take the, the dress shop, because I just love the idea of you owning a dress shop. Yep. Yeah. Um, so is if you lived behind it, it would have to be attached. That's, that's one yeah. of the key words. Sure. Here. It would have to be attached to that thing. You would have to do both the shop and, like, you have a shop in the front and, like, your kitchen behind, like, a wall. Yes. So it's, like, it's in that instance. Yep. As opposed to being more of a, of a kind of, like, these mixed-use ideas where I don't have them. Anyway, there's these terribly hand, look, looks like they're hand drawn. Those are getting into the good ones though, right there. We need more of that. <laughs> yeah, there we go. But anyway, you get, you get kind of the idea. It's, and one of, one of the examples um, was, here I'm getting, I should have just included slides. I apologize. So I think it was, Something that's apparently not going to load. But either way, so it was a single family home in the front, mm -hmm. and it was a detached single family home, right? And then behind it, not attached to it, was a um, shop, like a, a, a big storage shed shop thing. And they wanted to have somebody, that owner wanted to rent out the single family dwelling, but then keep his machine shop in the back. And that's where we came in and said that land use code doesn't apply that way. It needs to be attached. And that's that's one instance of where it became a problem. Can I shift gears just a little bit? Please. Is there a reason why we didn't consider a residential neighborhood business in this discussion is it in there it is not in there ah it's not in there so it doesn't matter okay <laughs> that's why we didn't that's why we didn't include it Susan wrote this report so you know it's thorough so So we can own the dress shop in R&B. Yeah, just put it in there. 
Sure. It's actually a nice place for it. That would be a nice place for it. But um, I, you would never be able to have in Murray a corner bakery. I mean, I, sure you could. I mean, I'm not going <clears> to. <throat> in the TOD and in the okay, MCCD sure. and yeah. the MCMU. Well, Where you I, want those pictures. But Superette would never be able to operate again. Yeah. It's true. Look, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, um, what my statement I'm going to make is I am not saying that I love Europe any more than I love Murray, because I don't. <laughs> but I do like the idea of me walking to the, na the corner store and buying some sourdough bread from the family that live behind the shop. Sure. And I don't like the idea of taking that ability away. I understand that it may be ambiguous and maybe we need to change what it's, what's said there. But um, housing pricing is going up. We all know that. Yes. This will just take away more places that people could live. That's my opinion. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, I, I don't disagree with you in that aspect. Um, that okay. we, you're right. We could do this in other zones, but we're taking it away from zones that currently you could do it in. Yeah, I mean, and and it really it comes down. The, the, there's multiple facets as to why. You know, also, you know, some of these like this one specifically, two 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 five. This is the one I was talking about, where they had the the home in front and kind of a shop in the back. Um, typically, these are not very well kept dwellings. No, I, um, I, and, I understand the yeah. issue and yeah. I understand no, and that, I know. you know, we, we don't want to have, you know, so, uh, people dwelling in a situation where it would be not great to dwell in, right? Mm -hmm. I understand that. Um, and so, so I, I get that. And I think, you know, you're more, you guys are, if, if you guys decide that Maybe it's not appropriate in the MG zone, but maybe it's appropriate. Maybe it's appropriate in the CD zone or that, whatever. That's, that's kind of where your, I'm leaning. I that, think a little bit. That is definitely within your purview. You can amend that. That's what these these kind of actions are for. Because um, I think to your point, um, that is you know in lots of situations a way that people have been able to have an affordable place to live is also slash the pace that they work right, and so they can make double use out of that. And I would feel like that would be the most appropriate in the CD zone that somebody could run a business and live either above and behind. And I think like maybe some of those, like I know there's one that's like maybe on 48th that had like a, an eye doctor place and then like an apartment behind it or something. Right. So, um, I think if we are trying to, open up affordable ways that people could live and work in the city. I think the CD zone would be the most logical place to do it. I don't know. I mean, MG and GO, I, those feel to me like they would, um, those uses conflict a little bit and kind of cause more problems. Because all, I think all the examples that you're, Using our like yeah you you would have a dry cleaner or something that would be a permitted use in a in a CD zone and have a way to be able to to live there also. You said that there's other zones that have that do allow this kind of situation or other uh, yeah other zones, mixed correct? Zones. Yeah, the, it's ma mainly our mixed, mixed use zones. Use. Yep. So it would be those orangey colors on your map. And those are a little bit different, I think, than what specifically Chair Pearson is talking about because mm -hmm. those would be, I mean, often they have higher densities, right, in our mixed uses. So they would be a commercial maybe and then you have an apartment above, but it's not a, a yeah, like a yeah, single business, single residence. Right. Yeah. So it doesn't directly, I feel like that is not quite the right solution to what, what we're talking about. Just looking at the map of the Your mic's oh, sorry, I cut it off. Um, looking at the map and <clears throat> with some of the other comments that have made been made, 
I think the only part of this that I, at least tonight, I'd be comfortable in changing is just in the manuf MG and not the CDC energy O. Do we have any idea how many non-conforming uses exist in these zones currently? No. No. But I mean, if, if that's something you guys want some more information on, we can, again, we can always table this too. Um, yeah, that's up to you. If you want some more data, if you want some more information, we can, we can look into that a little bit more too. Would it be helpful to approve just part of it and maybe table the rest? Or do you want to just keep it all together? Um, So taking action in any form would require to, to at least deal with part of it. So, I mean, you could amend, amend it and say, you know, like you guys were talking about doing, uh, taking it out of the MG, but leaving it on for the other ones. Um, and then we can revisit those other ones down the road. Um, or, you know, even at the next meeting, whatever, it would just be a new agenda, a, a new text amendment. Um, from from our side, from staff side. But we could still just table the item altogether. You could, and we can do a little bit more research on it too. You said you'd like to get away from you, the land use code approach. Maybe if I understood where you were thinking of going would make me a little more comfortable with doing this or not. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's really complex to kind of go over at this point, I think. Um, right now, the land use code is the law of the land, so that's what we have to work within. That was me just kind of pontificating on things that I've been trying to. Well, okay, for instance, how do other cities, if, if Provo and Murray are the only places that do this, how do other cities handle this kind of mm -hmm. uh, like this, use? This, specific, this specific code? They pretty much don't allow it. I, I don't think a city, again, I haven't done the research on it, so that's something that could be done. Um, we could see if that's a thing. Um, you don't hear of this thing. You don't hear of this type of use very often. Um, it's a unique land use code that I think was intended to be used, kind of how I explained at the beginning, kind of as a caretaker residence. Um, I guess I disagree with that a little bit. I, I can think of a number of examples where I've seen this before, and maybe it's just been a matter of zoning. Uh, but, I, well, frankly, I, I, I have seen a number of places where you have a business and a residence together. Mm -hmm. And I guess it seems like we're excluding that as a possibility. I'm not sure I'm entirely comfortable with that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and we can. Definitely. I mean, I don't, it, it's entirely up to you guys. But you guys decide you want to, what you want to do. I mean, I, I think I would be comfortable voting how it is if we want. I would be comfortable if someone wanted to change it. Um, I know we're probably talking about something that probably is not going to happen much. So I know we're having a long discussion about something that... Um, Wait until the seven. It's probably not going to be used that often. But. Yeah. But to the few people that it affects, it matters. I have a friend that owns a business and lives in it, Bingham, downtown Bingham. I don't know if it's illegal. Is it a dress shop? <laughs> <laughs> no. Here's Jake wants to get, he wants to get in on it. He wants to be a partner in that dress Thinking shop. Thinking about opening a dress shop. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate more data than know how many people we're affecting. I yeah. mean, if, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I mean, I guess I'm kind of feeling like if we do suddenly have a, dem a lot of demand for people coming in and wanting to build on State Street a place that they run a restaurant out of and live out of or whatever, and that starts happening, I guess we could re-look at this code. I mean, it's definitely not something that we're running into a lot right now. There's not a lot of demand for it. But I do think, and 
I'm not a planner, so I don't know, but like as cities grow and people get more desperate for places to live, these kind of, those, those kind of uses do grow more. Sure. Right. Yeah, so, I, so we're maybe not there yet. And so maybe we, but I think we're providing those growth opportunities in our mixed use zones. I think that's where that intensification of use is beginning to happen and where you're seeing those kind of things. And, yeah. and you know, the middle of state street in between one and Larry H. Miller's pieces of property, probably not going to see that. And they're probably not going to see that property away. Maybe not right soon. there, but as other things do redevelop, you know, like what about further down, you know, in front of um, Burlington Coat Factory and somebody wants to put, you know, Burlington Coat Factory is empty and that gets divided up and they want to yeah. have a business they want to, yeah, I mean, the, the Shopco property, even though it's been redeveloped, I think there's still a lot of work to be done on that property. Right, and yeah. so so saying, I don't know, that that's the only zone I feel like would, we would, because I do, I understand that this is an allowed use in the MCCD, and maybe it's, or sorry, in the mixed use, which is also the MCCD, and I think that that is kind of where my brain keeps going, is like, if you ran, I don't know, small something and then lived upstairs dress shop <laughs> a small dress shop i don't know why i could go to like dry cleaners or something like what do other cities do i don't know yeah. but um that the bigger mc the the bigger mixed use zones i don't know like if this these one-off kind of littler single family situations if that's exactly the right fit so i don't but like I said, like maybe we just address that if we start having like people that are interested in that. I don't know. So if somebody came in and wanted to put a development in along State Street in the CD zone that included businesses on the bottom floor and residential above that. That would not that would, be this use. Yeah, that would be that, a different use. That would be a We're different talking type of use. Something on State Street, right? You know, right here in, yeah. you know, on where is this spot that would empty? It's that T Rose, the house, the signs. Yeah, but that's in the MCCDs. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of like an example of something that would turn over, but it, you know, would maybe have like a small, a small business. Here you go. Um, that's the one that was. That's the, that's the detached one. Yeah. Well, this is actually one that's just down the street, but um, I think this one's actually been converted completely to uh, business. But. And this is the MG zone, right? Yeah. Which is so tricky because that looks like total residential on both sides. Of yeah. Um, like this, this is a non-conforming use duplex. Like it it exists um, in that zone. Um, mm -hmm. and then you have kind of these industrial, see, these are, these are existing, um, single families. Uh, all these non-conforming uses are just grandfathered in correct. from an earlier zone. Correct. Yep. Um, actually at one point, um, I think it was back again. The last time we did a really major zoning code update was in the eighties. Um, like when this was completely overhauled, um, it was in the eighties. And before that, um, they actually allowed housing in the MG zone, um, single family residential housing, um, actually even up until I think in sometime in the two thousands, cause this, this development is a multifamily housing and is also allowed in the MG zone, was allowed in the MG zone. Sorry. That, that. But my understanding is that that's caused lots of problems to have those things integrated like that, right? Like it's hard because, you know, then you get actual manufacturing businesses going in and neighbors being mm -hmm. upset. So I, I, yeah, on the one hand, I totally understand it. And I think it's good, but I don't know. I don't know if we're like stifling future people that need that. Ned, how do you feel? I haven't heard from you. I'm digesting. <laughs> this is all great. I think about where I grew up. There's still plenty of places of uh, bakery with somebody living above. Um, 
and all sorts of other non-conforming uses in residential areas. Little grocery store, small gas station, way less than 600 feet from uh, residentials. Um, but I'm not seeing any of that today. Yeah. With, Especially uh, here. Development, um, big development. Yeah. You know, 30 houses go in. Once in a while you'll get two, three, maybe a half a dozen uh, in a little gated street. Um, and I'm not sure I see this in the future. I'm not so, sure that, and like uh, Mary said, maybe it comes back. And if it does strongly mm -hmm. come back, uh, which it could, we've got a lot of space that can get redeveloped. 99% of State Street, perhaps. Uh, and maybe it comes back and, and we maybe address it in the future. But I'm not, I'm, I don't see it today. I, I agree. My question is just because we don't see it, should we then take away the ability for someone to do it? There's always ability, Mr. Chairman. All you do is you come to the Planning Commission and you request. And we've done it. We've changed code for developers. Individual individual uh, users. I, I agree. Absolutely. But we're, I agree. I, no, I, it's easier if it's in the code. Yeah. But, but um, we've got a great planning staff and, and they're going to tell somebody who comes in and says, want to do this. Well, the code doesn't say that. But if you want to go ahead and try to change the code through planning commission and the city council, go ahead and do it. And we've done it already. So, Just in the last few years, we've done it. So here's the question I have. So as a city, should our, should our thinking be we should allow people to do what they want with their land as much as possible unless it's causing an issue because that's what I kind of think. And unless we can point to an issue, which I don't think there is one. I mean, I understand there was a, we had to clarify some stuff, but I don't see the issue. So that's why I'm leaning towards we shouldn't take away someone's freedom to do with their land what they want unless it's an issue, unless it's affecting their neighbors or something. And I don't think it does. I think if there's a bakery and someone's living behind it, that would be way better than just the bakery. But that's just me. Only if you despise that smell of fresh bread, bread in the morning. Bread, bread, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Some people do. You're going to gain weight. <laughs> Some people do. That's just my opinion. I mean, I, I agree with that. I, I don't have strong feelings on this other than I'm more standing on a... Um, just a, a property a, rights. Yeah, property so rights. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> fine, and that's fine. <laughs> like that. Sure. Do you remember on 45th, there was a house that they converted into, I think, like a Airbnb, like crystal shop place? Yes. 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 And they, she lived there, right? She Part part of it was going to be her residence, and part of it was going to be crystal shop slash. Yeah. So Sorry, that, that that's in the CD zone now. We rezoned that, I think, to be CD zone when she came. Yes. And so now we would just be like, yes, you can have the business. Now a different use code. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, so that, that complicates it even more. Shop, right? yeah, if, if it, it was, was just her just personal shop, shop and yeah. the, part of her house or whatever, like she would now only be able to do right. the shop and not be able to have a residence. Correct. There. Even if she were to come before us now. Now, if yeah. we change it. Yeah. You saw one example where it had been an issue, but is this really an issue from your standpoint? Why do we need to change it? I think it provides clarity. It is does clarity? help. Clarity, is that the only it, reason? It does help provide clarity. Um, it's been quite, it's been a lot over the past couple months dealing with a few a few um, residents that have wanted to challenge how we've traditionally taken it. Um, I, I can't speak to it a lot more because uh, I've kind of been separated from that. Um, Susan has dealt with with this with that a lot um, in those interpretations. Um, I haven't been as 
involved with it. You mentioned at one place where that house had a detached shop behind, mm -hmm. and that you said that this wouldn't apply because it wasn't attached. What? Right. What? Is there something else that covers that, or is it not allowed? Not allowed. But that, that almost, took that almost seems like a more optimal situation than if it was attached. Yeah, I mean, and that again, that's kind of that clarity thing, right? Is that um, so? One of the aspects of that was um, I'm getting kind of too into the weeds with it, but um, one of the things they wanted to do was they what they had expressed, what that homeowner had expressed to me was that they wanted to do storage of RV vehicles on that property and live on the property. So then that comes up to, well, how do you attach that, that non-residential piece? How do you attach a storage use to, when it's not covered, it's just outdoor storage, right? It's not a garage, it's not anything like that. Like a tow yard, for example, right? Um, they just sit outside. How do you define that as attached to a single family residential? Um, that's where some of that, um, some of that uh, clarity was needed and part of it that came forward because you can't really, you can't, you can't attach Harvey storage to a, to a dwelling. Um, so that's kind of the long way of getting to your answer. I, I would say if we need to clarify the 1113 code, that would be better for me. I'd probably be OK with that. And if we need someone to draw better pictures, because the pictures, I think, were pretty clear, but they need to be colored or something, I think we could do that too. I mean, does anyone oppose to tabling it, bringing it back so that we can have the conversation with Susan, who's done a little more of the research on this, and and really put her through, or, or are you comfortable moving forward? Well, and maybe that's what we need to do, but I'm still trying to understand if it's just a concern about the clarity, or if you're trying to prohibit a business and a with somebody living there being. Um, or not allowing a business with somebody living in it. Mm. And I think that's a great, I, I think, I think that's better. It's a little bit of both, I think. Um, more the clarity sign, I think, well, than I prohibiting. Think maybe what we're worried about is the prohibiting at you. Mm -hmm. If we need to clarify it, I think that's, legitimate then I think in my opinion then if if if, if there needs to be clarification as opposed to um, revocation I would probably table it let us kind of do some more research um, it's up to you whether you want to table it to a date certain so like to the next meeting um, for these we only have to notice um, just affected entities so if you want us to do a little bit more digging um, we can kind of bring it back uh, at, at a later date, too. You don't have to be date certain on that one. Okay. So, I mean, to answer Travis's question, I'm not opposed to tabling it. I'm not opposed to voting on it either. Um, but um, what? so what would you prefer, Zach? If, would you prefer us to just table it indefinitely or, and then you could put on agenda in the future? Or would you prefer us to put a date on it? Um, I think because um, we haven't gotten there yet, but your next meeting is going to be pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. um, not pretty, it's going to be very heavy um, mm -hmm. with another tax amendment um, that I, I think maybe either tabling it, and I don't know what the holidays looks like, so I would probably say just if we can get it on the next one, if Susan feels comfortable getting it on the next one, we'll put it on the next one. Um, if, if we are going to have a, you know, I would just say just table it for now and we'll figure out a date. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we need to add any specifics on 
come back with information regarding or are you clear on? I think we're pretty, yeah, we're, we're pretty clear. And I have a feeling Susan's probably going to come back and watch this anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm pretty clear. I, I have a good understanding of what we're, what we're looking for. <clears throat> Just point of order. We have not done public comment, right? No, we probably do. We do want that. to do that, or do we want to hold? I mean, you could probably we, let's could. just do it. Just okay. so we did it. Um, since nobody's here, um, maybe there's somebody watching that would like to make a public comment. So let's just do it. Um, so I'm going to open up the public comment period. Uh, if you are watching remotely, you need to email planning commission at murray.utah.gov. And nobody is in this room, so we're going to just wait for someone to email us for a second. I was really excited for a minute because I did actually have an email <laughs> in, my, in, my, in my email box, but it wasn't. I, I was like, oh my gosh, somebody's actually paying attention to that. They probably that tuned out long ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there's, there's nothing. Okay, we're going to go ahead and close the public comment period, and then we can... If someone wants to make a motion to table it, I'll make a motion, Mr. That. Chair. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we uh, table agenda item number seven, land use text amendment um, for amending section 17.144.02, and 17.160.020 um, until a further date, future date. Thank you. We have a motion from Commissioner Nay. Is there a second? I'll second. We have a second from Commissioner Patterson. Okay, let's do a roll call vote. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Nay. Yes. Commissioner Patterson. Yes. Commissioner Henry. Yes. Commissioner Hacker. Yes. Commissioner Milkevich. Yes. And Chair Pearson. Yes. Okay, that is um, tabled to a future meeting. And I thought. Commissioner Nay was broken for a second. Like, I thought he was looping. <laughs> <laughs> My wife says the same say, thing all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, Ned, hit, hit him. <laughs> okay, I think that was our last agenda item. Do we have any um, anything else? Um, that? I was just going to tell you, next one is, is it's a doozy. It's a um, pretty much a, a, a big, hefty rewrite of the subdivision ordinance um, based on state code. Um, what? Tomorrow, um, a training session. Oh, yeah. Oh, Here? yes. Yes, yes ULI Monday is having a training Monday. session. Monday. Oh, there's two. I thought there was one tomorrow. Yeah, yep, there is one tomorrow. Um, it's the one that we went to. Yeah. ULI, it's the Urban Land Institute. Um, if you can come, come. Um, it Susan starts at Travis eight. It's like eight to one. Attended that same one yep. a couple of months ago. It's it's kind of yeah. good. Susan's pretty much hosting it, so um, it's, it's a game. It's eight like to one. yeah, like eight to so, one. Yeah. Yeah, I can't come. Um, can, but. but then yes, Monday the WFRC is also going to be here, going over the um, I think twenty fifty vision. Um, I think that's what decade they're on. I don't know. Do, do you know? Yeah. 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 It's uh. Yeah. Uh, it's 4 to 6 p.m. on Monday. It's the it's called the Wasatch Front Regional Council. Um, yeah. Yep, it'll be here. I don't know who set that up. Nobody in this office knows who set that up. It just Who set up being here? Yeah. Oh, oh really? <laughs> no clue. Okay. I have no clue where it came from. Um, but yes, so um, I think probably in, it's in, in the... It says right here, Murray City Hall Council Chambers. Yep, because it's a big thing. Yeah, it's a pretty big thing. They're going to review the refresh wash that's choice vision for the area, map out the potential trail and open space concepts that build on the vision, and discuss ideas to collaborate and address water and housing issues. What, yeah. time, what time is it? It's four. at 4 o'clock on Monday yeah. the 20th. Yep. That, four that's with Wasatch Front Regional Council. Yep. That's kind of their big, that's their big thing is their, their vision, uh, their vision for whatever decade. <laughs> they finish a decade and they immediately start the next. If you want, I can email this to you. I can have it. Yeah. I can have it. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's a heavy, heavy, heavy subdivision code to review. Okay. Great. So. Um, is there anything else? No. Then we could have a motion to adjourn. With the time. With the time? 
<laughs> motion to adjourn. Motion. We have a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.